So excited for this week. I've brought on Lauren Teary. Lauren, welcome to the podcast. Hi, I'm happy to be here. Tell us a little bit about her, yourself. Where are you at and what do you do? All right. So my name is Lauren. I'm a personal trainer in Chicago. I'm currently back in school for my master's in nutrition and functional medicine and also training for a half Ironman. <laughs> so I have a full plate. A few things on the <laughs> table. Just a few. You know, I like to stay busy. So I know a lot of people in the fitness realm, but the reason I wanted to bring you on and share your story, which really inspired me is you know the freshman what is it the freshman 15 normally that's the normal number yeah and what how much did you gain so I was the freshman 40 yeah 40 pounds in one year talk about a whirlwind life-changing moment <laughs> um I'm so grateful that it happened because it has changed my life in tenfold so I can kind of touch on that for sure. Yeah, the give a little back. I mean, how does one gain? I mean, were you wearing <laughs> sweatpants? How did you? 40 pounds is a lot. So much denial. So yeah, freshman year, I moved away from home. Obviously, I went to school at the University of Iowa. I had an amazing roommate. I ended up making so many friends. But what do you do when you're making friends? You go out, you drink, you eat, you don't go to the gym. Like no one goes to the gym. And if you did go to the gym, it was to go sit in the sauna and then get a smoothie after. Like that was the extent of it. So I definitely put on the pounds. I'm talking, I didn't even realize it was happening. I just wore yoga pants all the time, which I wish someone would have told me, <laughs> but like, that's not a good look. Um, but looking back at those pictures that were taken freshman year, you know, after leaving freshman year, I was like, why did no one tell me that I gained all this weight? I was just in such denial. I was feeding my ego with just so much negativity after that because I was like, I look like crap. I feel like crap. How did I let this happen? Um, so yeah, that how was did you how turn I turned that around. Like, how do you go from 40 pounds overweight, feeling like shit, eating terribly with no exercise regimen to being a personal trainer, training for triathlete, like how do you do that? It all started for one very vain reason. So I was a server at a bar and to get promoted to bartender, you had to be there for at least a year and you had to look the part. So all of the bartenders were super pretty girls, all very skinny. And I was like, you know what? This was sophomore year. I was like, I wanna do that. I wanna look like them. I wanna be a bartender, that's my goal. So I just started. That's the hardest part is just getting started. Um, and through that, you know, I learned, I made progress. I had so many setbacks along the way and that's what helped, you know, make me who I am. So that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I started going to the gym and I had no idea what I was doing. I was like, I don't want to go here. There's sweaty people. What the hell am I doing? I was so intimidated, but I ended up watching a ton of YouTube videos and made like my own workouts. I went on Pinterest and I typed in like, you know, leg workouts and I would just do the circuits that were on there and I would, you know, hop on the treadmill. I started to clean up my diet. I stopped eating like an absolute asshole so I wouldn't have pizza at three in the morning. <laughs> and, like Donuts every day. So just those little small changes of me going to the gym. I'm talking, I would go maybe twice a week, three times a week max because I hated it. And you start to see progress. And with that progress comes a little bit of a mental shift. So freshman year, I ended up on academic probation just because I wasn't doing so hot. I was a little concerned with, you know, partying. I turned it completely around. By the time I graduated, I had like a three point something. Um, which is amazing. And I started to become more of like a positive person, which I never would have thought would ever happen in a million years. But that required a lot of cutting out the people in your life that are like, oh, Lauren doesn't want to hang out. She has to go to the gym in the morning. Like those type of people that talk negatively, like, oh, she won't want to go get drinks because she's on a diet. And it's like, no, guys, it doesn't work that way. It's about living a balanced life. But at that time, I didn't really know what balance was <laughs> at all. I was kind of doing it and like seeing progress. And then um, I started to link my happiness to a body type, which 
is super common in the fitness world. And I kind of let that get the best of me. So I went from one extreme to the next. I ended up working out a ridiculous amount, overtraining to the max, talking three times a day sometimes, totally under eating and just like so concerned with that number on the scale that if I didn't see it go down, it would legit ruin my day. So I was like, this is not the way I want to live. This is not the way it should be. <laughs> like that switch came from kind of understanding that like, your body needs nutrients. You can't just give it the bare minimum and expect to do well. So that's where all that came from. One that's quite a, yeah, that's quite a roller coaster though. So you went from, and I've seen that happen actually to friends of mine that, and I think you do, you kind of become obsessed. It, it's uh, an addiction, right? So you become addicted to the gym. And um, I remember, oh my gosh, especially this time of year, every year in college and high school, I don't think I realized that at the time, but I was prepping for spring break. So I would go in and I'd do an hour of cardio and then I would hit the weights and sometimes it was two a days and, and it is, it was about the number on the scale. And now for me, it's more like what feels good. So what would you tell listeners that how, how can they create this balance of diet and and working out and exercising, but that it's a lifestyle. It's not a diet. Do not link it to a diet. Don't even use the word diet. It's just a lifestyle shift. If you want to be successful, you just have to embrace it as a lifestyle. Make those tiny changes. It becomes so normal and such a part of your life that you don't even realize that you're dieting anymore. You just feel good. So if you eat well, you feel good. If you eat like shit, you feel like shit. So kind of just gauge how you're feeling. If you're like so lethargic and you realize you ate, you know, pizza and donuts all weekend, and then you start eating, you know, a normal amount of food, <laughs> it doesn't have to be chicken, rice, and veggies, but you feel good. That's what matters. You need to have that fuel to like make you a person, <laughs> you know, to think, to breathe, to have awesome skin. If you, like, you just need those nutrients. Um, so my tips, I guess, sorry, that's super long winded. Um, it's just set goals, not geared towards a number on the scale. If you're starting this weight loss journey or you just want to feel better, don't really focus on the scale. Yes, it's a good gauge, but if you're judging your attitude from the number on the scale and how your day is going to go, that's a really good sign that you shouldn't be doing <laughs> like this. You're doing it the wrong way. Um, you know, love the way you look regardless. Your body's gonna change, that's gonna happen, especially as you start to get healthier. Iron Man has taught me that so much. So through this whole training, I realized, you know, your body's a machine. If you're not giving it the nutrients and the proper nutrition, you're gonna run out of gas. And you're gonna feel awful. You can't perform well. You're not gonna, you know, perform at your best. So, um, you know, feel good. You're gonna look good. <laughs> I think um, that's yeah, that's what I've kind of learned that um, I love food. I always have. Anyone that knows yeah. me knows that I cook and bake a lot. Uh, at yes, sometimes do, I, I wonder why I don't weigh a couple hundred pounds. But I've also learned that um, it's all about moderation, right? Like it's fine to eat cupcakes and, and cookies, but maybe not every day. Or that pizza's fine, but maybe not a piece, a whole one, maybe have two pieces. Exactly. Literally, it's, it's the littlest things <laughs> that make the biggest change. Let's say somebody, they're, they're new to the gym, and, and you, you found a lot of stuff on YouTube and Pinterest and, and whatever, but how would you suggest maybe somebody's intimidated by a trainer or you know they have that excess weight to lose? How do you get them in the mental mindset to take the steps daily action, right? How do you mm -hmm. get them? What would you suggest for the mindset? So for the mindset, it's huge. If you tell yourself that you're going to go to the gym tomorrow, but you have no plan of action, it's not going to happen. What, what's the likelihood that you're actually going to get off the couch and go to a place you really don't want to go to? Very slim to them. So I say to start shifting your mental mindset to get into it is break your bad habits. Kind of be mindful of what's happening. If your bad habit is that after work you come home, you turn on the TV immediately and just sit on the couch, 
recognize that and maybe pack your clothes with you. So after work, you go straight to the gym before you go home, even if it is 20 minutes of working out. Um, another good you know, change to make is be vocal about your goals. The more people you tell, the more likely you are to do it. And you never know, someone that you're telling these goals to can help you. They might have been through the same thing. Their sister might have gone through the same thing. Maybe they have a trainer in their family. It's always good to kind of vocalize, not only for you, but you know, to ask for help in a way. There's no shame in asking for help. <laughs> and what about, um, you know, I think a lot of people are concerned with the money, gym, gym memberships, some gym memberships now, my gosh, CrossFit and all them or anywhere. I've seen up to $200 a month. So what about somebody who maybe doesn't have a lot of spare funds? What can they do? Absolutely. I hate to say this, but Instagram is such an amazing resource for free workouts. If you type, there's so many people out there, even Pinterest, if you type in at home workouts, I'm talking 20 minutes at home, 30 minutes. There's so many YouTube videos like yoga with Adrian. Her videos are like 15 minutes and you can learn how to do yoga in your living room. You don't need any equipment. I swear people are like, oh my gosh, my brother is one of them. He's like, <laughs> I don't have any equipment. It's such a you know big financial investment. You literally only need your body. <laughs> you could be outside. You can be inside. Just Google. I swear it'll be the best help you've ever had, and it's totally free. Even I, you know, when I used to work in corporate, I had coworkers that would literally just walk on their lunch break, and that 20, 30, however many minutes they'd walk on their lunch break, hitting those 10,000 steps or whatever, they totally lost weight over time. Obviously, clean up their eating some, but it was just that just walking. Literally, walking, take the stairs instead of the elevator. Like if you're on the fourth floor of your building, walk up those stairs. If you have groceries, that's even more of a challenge. Cool, you have added weight. Talk about some resistance training. Like, just do it. You just, just get started, do something. Move your body, do some jumping jacks. <laughs> yes. And I'm all about, even in the morning, I have a morning routine that I like to do. And it includes literally, it's, uh, I think, I take a half an hour, but the, the exercise part of it, I believe is, um, like a 12 minute hit, a 12 minute hit workout. Yes. Because, I mean, everyone has 12 minutes, even if you're watching your show at night, right? You'd be doing something. Seriously. And you just feel so good after. Do you ever work out and say, I don't feel like that was good. Like I feel worse than when I started. Yeah. Very yeah. rare. Yeah. Do you know, I actually, I used to watch The Biggest Loser and even Dancing with the Stars as motivation because seeing, seeing them made me want to go to the gym. Exactly. And just like, when you start to see those results, it's just so motivating because you actually did it. Like you are actually doing something, this big, scary goal that you want. You're actually taking steps towards it and it just changes your life even if you realize it or not, it's gonna happen. Cause you're actually doing, like reaching a goal that you've set so high for yourself. It's just so cool to see manifest, like with all my clients and everything, just their mindset shifts and what they're reaching. It's crazy. Their lives literally change just from working out and eating right. What is a common thread that you notice with all your clients? Like the common, goal for everyone or even just what they experience uh is it their mindset is it just something that clicks and what is a common theme with them mindset absolutely everyone comes in they want to lose weight well why do you want to lose weight oh i have a wedding coming up i don't feel good you know i used to weigh this in college i want to weigh this again i'm like okay you know that's great but through our sessions we kind of get to the deeper point of why is this a thing and it's just crazy to see the mind shift, mindset shift, words, um, as they start to kind of reach towards their goal. And the less focused they are on that number, the more their confidence builds and the more likely they are to reach those goals. And every single client that I have has had such a mind shift change. Like, I have clients quitting their jobs because they don't like them anymore <laughs> to like go and pursue something they actually want to do. And that transpired through just moving their body and like confidence. having the energy to do this and the confidence. Yeah. And now they're losing weight in the meantime and they don't even realize that's 
happening anymore, which is crazy. They're just so excited to, you know, be changing. What about, because I know diet, the food, the food that you intake is, is part, it's a huge part of it. But if you are addicted or so used to eating out and eating that fried food, how do you go from that to maybe more of the clean eating and eating at home and, and not just meal prep because I think that's kind of a, a stigma in its own because and one I, I feel correct me if I'm wrong but I don't think there's a one fits all right so um, absolutely not food workouts whatever so how can you what would you suggest somebody do to totally revamp their food I know this sounds so cliche, but you have to find what works for you. So, you know, there's so many diets out there, keto, South Beach, all those, you know, mumbo jumbo. If you try it out and you're like, oh my gosh, I love this one, well, stick with it. I think the easiest thing though, so like freshman year when I was going out and partying and drinking all the time, that doesn't mean that sophomore year, I just completely stopped drinking. I mean, I was a bartender. You just got it, you know, I hate to say everything in moderation, but everything in moderation and keep that in moderation. So everyone's like, oh, I can have a cookie every day. And that leads to two or three cookies. And it's like, yes, you can have a cookie every day. I'm not going to tell you not to eat something. If you want to eat it, go ahead. But try making little swaps to more nutrient dense foods. You'll find yourself be more full throughout the day. So say you're having a very small breakfast, a medium sized lunch, an okay dinner. And then after dinner, you're like, I am so fucking hungry. Like, I just want to eat like the rest of the world, and then you have everything but the kitchen sink and that your pantry's completely cleared out, that's a good sign that you didn't have a nutrient-dense day. The more nutrients you consume through breakfast, lunch, dinner, the less likely you are to have those crazy binges and crazy sugar cravings. So that's a good tip of just to kind of switch to your nutrient-dense food. I want to ask you another question because a lot of people I know, I know a lot of not only gym rats, but just very healthy people. And, and especially those that like to go on diets, which I just don't think work. I think it's about being, having a healthy lifestyle, but those yeah. that have a cheat day or cheat meal, how do you feel about that? I don't believe it in it. It's not my thing. I hate when people say cheat meals that just creates a mindset already where you're like, going into that binge mentality yeah. where it's just like you're restricted during the week and then you have that one meal where you can just do whatever. I hate having that restrictive mentality. It's not good for you. So if you want to have a burger and your body is craving it, give it a damn burger. Just make sure you're giving it the real thing. If you want a cookie and your body is like, I need this cookie, cool. Have a cookie. Just try to go for a homemade option and not a Chips Ahoy that's going to have a longer shelf life than you. Yeah, ew, <laughs> gross. So I literally, I hate those cheat meal ideas because later on, it's going to cause a binge. You're going to have 30 cookies and 20 hamburgers in one day and be like, where did, where did I go wrong? Just give in. Let it happen. If your body wants it, give it to it. <laughs> okay, so I kind of want to end with some rapid fire questions. And these are Love those it. that uh, you don't get to think about it. So the first that that comes to your head, say it. All right. Who is your favorite fitness guru or athlete? Oh, man. This is a really good question. Oh, what's her name? Why am I drawing a blank on it? I just I follow her Instagram all the time. Oh, she just had a baby named Stanley. Oh, Gwen Jorgensen. There we go. She's a triathlete slash runner, and she is such a boss lady. Awesome. I will check her out. What is one book you're reading? Oh my gosh, it's called Rich Bitch by Nicole Lappin. And if you are horrible with your finances and you're into humorous writing, it's the go-to book. Rich Bitch, okay. Yeah, hilarious. It's good. What motto or quote do you live by? Oh my gosh, so many. Mine, I literally always circle back to the universe has your back and everything happens for a reason. Love those. I totally agree. <laughs> Lauren, um, for listeners wanting to check you out or maybe in their, if they're in the Chicago area, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, so my website is Lauren Teary, T-I-E-R-I, fitness.com. Um, my Instagram is at fitlo, F-I-T-L-O underscore. Uh, and you can find me anywhere in the Chicago area. I'm running around 
all the time. So if you want to track me down, those are the two places to find me. Awesome. Lauren, thank you so much for your advice today on fitness and, and overall healthy eating and lifestyle. Thank you for having me. I hope it helped a little bit. <laughs> if you have questions, just let me know. Will do. And uh, for the listeners, I'll include all those links below in the comments. So be sure to check out Lauren. Thanks, guys. Thank you.